Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Listening to Reading. We're continu continuing on the Boxcar Children, the Yellow House Mystery. And today's chapter is chapter number three. It is called The Mystery. I guess we're going to find out what's the mystery about the Yellow House Mystery. Or at least get a little bit better idea anyway. So, chapter three, The Mystery. The children were very lonesome after the wedding. They longed so much for Joe and Alice, but just then the mystery of the yellow house began. Supper was over. Warm air was blowing through the open windows and birds were singing their evening songs. As Mr. Alden sat down in his easy chair, he said with a pleasant smile, isn't it time to think about summer plans? Henry looked at his grandfather. Grandfather, do you mind if I ask you something? No, of course not, said Mr. Alden. Ask anything you like. You may not think it's very polite, said Henry. But what is a grandfather for, asked Mr. Alden, winking at Benny. I know you're very polite to me always. Go ahead, and please, don't be afraid. Well, do you remember last fall I asked you why we never went into that little yellow house on Surprise Island? You looked very cross or upset for a minute, and Jesse and I were sure we had hurt your feelings. Jesse went on. Don't you remember? You said, that's another story. Yes, I do remember that all right, said Mr. Alden. I never could forget that. He looked from one face to another. If you four children will come over here and sit down on the floor, I will tell you about it. I guess the time has come when you ought to know. Mr. Alden waited until they were ready to listen, and then he began speaking. You know, I told you my father built the barn on Surprise Island for his best racehorses. And that the man who took care of the horses built the little yellow house for himself. That man's name was Bill. He was about 30 years old then, and so was I. I loved Bill very much. He took very fine care of the racehorses, and he lived in the little yellow house with his good wife. Racehorses, cried Benny. Did they race? Yes, they raced while my father was living. Here's a picture of the racehorse if you'd like to see it. <clears throat> my father was your great grandfather, you know. Bill loved the horses, and he was a good, kind man. But I must tell you, he was weak. Not very strong, you mean, said Benny. No, Benny. I don't mean that at all. He was a very strong man physically. He could lift the boat. I mean, but he had a very weak will. Anybody could tell him what to do, Mr. Alden stopped. <clears throat> don't tell us if you don't want to, begged Jesse. Yes, I want to tell you now. You see, even though I loved Bill, I'm afraid that he was a coward. He would do anything his brother Sam told him. And his brother had some very bad friends. The children were suddenly very quiet. They knew that this was a sad story for their grandfather to tell. Let me go and get watch, please, cried Benny. I'll be right back. Everyone had to smile as Benny disappeared into the kitchen. They knew that Benny always wanted the dog when things did not go just right. He came back at once with Watch running after him. <clears throat> Lie down here, old fella, said Henry. Watch laid down beside Benny and put his head on his paws. Well, one evening, Mr. Alden went on, Bill's wife, Margaret, noticed that Bill seemed to have something on his mind and he would not talk about it. After she had gone to bed, she had a strange, she heard a strange grating noise in the front room where Bill was. She got up to see what he was doing. There he sat, reading the paper. The noise had stopped. He asked her what she wanted. She told him about the strange noise. He said it must have been the waves on the rocks. But it wasn't the waves. And Margaret knew it. She began to very much be worried. She went back to bed and pretended to be asleep, and the noise began again. Didn't she ever find out what it was? asked Benny. <clears throat> no, Benny, she never did find out. To this day, nobody knows what Bill was doing in that front room. This went on for two nights. The next night, Margaret smelled something very strange. She thought it might be paint, but when she came out, Bill was not painting. 
he was reading. Then one night he went out to the barn to see the horses. And Bill never came back. Never came back? asked Violet. No. Margaret waited an hour. Then she took a light and went out to look for him. He had given the horses water, but he had left the barn door open. The rowboat was gone. Then Margaret telephoned to me, and I got up and, and I got dressed and found a policeman. Captain Daniel took us over to the island in another boat, but of course it was dark and we couldn't find a thing. No clues, said Benny. That's right, no clues, said Mr. Alden. Next day, the island was full of policemen. They looked under the barn, under the dock, all throughout the woods, but they couldn't find Bill. They found Bill's rowboat a few days later. It was tied up at another dock about a mile away on the mainland. Did they radio the news? asked Benny. And get the FBI men? Oh, think, Benny, said Henry. There weren't any radios then. Oh, I forgot, said Benny. But at last they found him, didn't they? No. They never found Bill. Mr. Alden stopped and then went on again. Margaret thought that the clues were the, were the strange smell and the grating noise in the front room. So the police went all over the little yellow house. They might they thought they might find a letter. Margaret thought that she had seen Bill reading one. You mean maybe a letter frightening Bill, said Henry. Yes, that's right. But they never found one. They even took up the rugs. They hunted all through the desk. They even went down the chimney with a light. Did they take up the floorboards, asked Henry. Here's a picture to give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on. No, they didn't take them up, but they looked at every board in the house. There was dust between every two boards. Why didn't they put a notice in the newspapers? They did. We had a notice in the newspaper evening every day for two years, but nothing came of it. I'm so sorry for Margaret, said Violet. She must be old now. Yes, my dear, said her grandfather with a smile. She seems old to you. I know. Seems old, said Violet. Do I know her? Yes, you all know her, and you know her very well, said Mr. Alden. For she is... Now, who do you think it might be? If you said Mrs. McGregor, you are correct. That is Alice. I'm sorry, that was her, not, not Alice, I apologize. Mrs. McGregor shouted all the children. They could not believe it, for Mrs. McGregor had taken care of them and listened to their troubles ever since they had come to live with her grandfather. They could not think of her as a young, young or anyone as in a mystery. At last, Henry said, I suppose she couldn't live alone in the island, and so great-grandfather gave her a home here. That's right. He asked her to come here to live with us as our housekeeper, and the next year he died. She has lived here ever since. We never talk about Bill now, and nobody has ever been inside the little yellow house since that time. Why, said Jesse, it's such a lovely little house. It's too bad it's such a sad place, and nobody can live there. Henry sat up and put his hand on his grandfather's knee. Grandfather, couldn't we go into the little yellow house? I do wish you'd let us. Just look around. We might find something. Mr. Alden looked at Henry and smiled. You're a good boy, Henry. But do you really think you could find anything where the police couldn't? No, I suppose not, said Henry. But just the same, all the children kept looking at their grandfather. Suddenly he leaned forward. Do you really want to go, children? Oh, yes, they all answered. Well, all right, you may go. You may hunt all around you like, and see what you can find. Then Benny said, I don't want to go. You don't want to go, shouted Henry. Why not? Well, I think it would be mean to go without Joe and Alice, said Benny. They would, they won't come home from their wedding trip for two weeks. Is that all? You scared me, Benny. I thought you really didn't want to go. We'd all like to wait, said Violet. It will be much more fun if Joe and Alice go with us. 
Wouldn't it be wonderful if we found something, some clue, cried Henry? Yes, it would, said Mr. Alden, but I don't, I don't think you will. Now, please don't talk about this with Mrs. McGregor yet, will you? We won't, promised Henry. Look, Benny, you won't tell, will you? I never tell secrets, do I? asked Benny. I never told where Joe and Alice went on the wedding trip, did I? Do you know? asked Henry in a great surprise. Of course I do. You do? <laughs> said Mr. Alden, laughing. I don't know myself. Nobody told me. They told me I could tell you two days after the wedding. That's right now. Well, Jesse said, where did they go? They went to our barn on Surprise Island, said Benny. That was another surprise because they are so near and everybody thinks that they are so far away. That's right, said Benny. Uh, just think of that. Our very own barn where we stayed last summer, cried Jesse. That's right, said Benny. He was delighted to surprise even his grandfather. Well, said Henry, now I can hardly wait for them to come home. I shan't sleep a week tonight, said Jesse. I shall be thinking of Joe and Alice and the little yellow house. They all expected to stay awake all night, but they were soon all sleeping quietly. Even watch. Wow, what an incredible mystery. Yeah, uh, so I did not realize that um, the man's wife was Mrs. McGregor, but um, that's kind of a cool little mystery in itself, but that's obviously why she's so sad. But uh, anyway, the next chapter is called The Ten Box. As ten as in T-I-N, not T-E-N, The Ten Box. And so next time on Listening to Reading, we will read chapter four. I hope you enjoyed chapter three as much as I did. I know I'm getting into this mystery as much as you are. Have a great, awesome day. We'll see you soon.